Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you to this media event following the third India-US 2 plus 2 ministerial dialogue. I will begin by announcing the documents which have been concluded between the two sides. First, the basic exchange and cooperation agreement between the Ministry of Defense, Government of India, and the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, Department of Defense of the United States of America. Second, the MOU for technical cooperation in Earth Observations and Earth Sciences between the Ministry of Earth Sciences, Government of India, and the no National Oceanic and Atmospheric Ad Administration of the United States of America. Third, the arrangement extending the duration of the MOU between the Government of India and the Government of United States of America concerning cooperation with the Global Center for Nuclear Energy Partnership in India. Fourth, the agreement for the electronic exchange of customs data between the postal operators, that is India Post and the United States Postal Services. And fifth, the letter of intent between the Central Council for Research in Ayurvedic Sciences, New Delhi, of the Ministry of Ayush, Government of India, and the Office of Cancer, Complementary and Alternative Medicine, National Cancer Institute, National Institutes of Health, Department of Health and Human Services of the USA for cooperation in the field of Ayurveda and cancer research. Now moving on to the press statements by the distinguished dignitaries, may I now request Honorable Raksha Mantri, Sri Rajnath Singh, to deliver his remarks. Okay. Secretary Pompeo, Secretary Jasper, my esteemed colleague, Dr. Jayashankar, members of press, lady and gentlemen, I thank the secretaries, their delegations, and all members of US media who have traveled to India to meet us amidst the threat of COVID-19 pandemic. I deeply appreciate your commitment to our bilateral relations. During the meeting today, we have had comprehensive discussions on key aspects of our bilateral and multilateral cooperation. We consider the major challenges we face, the need for quick economic recovery and growth, prevention of the pandemic rebuild, the global supply chains and related issues receive obvious priority in our discussions. I met Dr. Esper, Dr. Esper yesterday to discuss bilateral defense issues. We continued our discussions on larger regional and global perspective today over the 2 plus 2. Signing the BECA today, after signing the LEMOA in 2016 and COMCASA in 2018 is a significant achievement in that direction. I would also like to highlight some of the other noteworthy steps taken by both India and the US in follow-up to our earlier discussions. These include positioning of US Navy liaison officer and Indian fusion center, Indian ocean region, and Indian liaison officer at Navicent, Bahrain, greater interaction and coordination with CENTCOM and AFRICOM, setting up of the COMSEC account and increasing the scope and complexities of our exercises. Now liaison officers at each other's establishment could be leveraged to enhance our information sharing architecture. To sum it up, our military to military cooperation is progressing very well. In two days' meeting, we also ex explored probable capacity building and other joint cooperation activities in third countries, including our neighborhood and beyond. We have convergence of views on a number of such proposals and will take those forward. I welcome the acceptance of our request for cooperation in the advanced field of maritime domain awareness. Both sides agreed to comprehend the requirements and initiate processes for joint development of requisite 
systems and expertise. In the defense industrial cooperation area, we had a very candid and useful discussion. Recent initiative of Atma Nirbhar Bharat in defense sector was underlined as a key driver and a guiding factor of our defense industrial cooperation. I highlighted the capabilities of Indian defense industry and their usefulness in the supply chain of major US platforms and systems. We have identified priority near-term projects for joint development between respective agencies which need to be fast-tracked under the Defense Trade and Technology Initiative and resolve to work together in defense research and development more efficiently. Defense innovation field was being growing consistently in our discussions in recent years. The instruments of Industrial Security Annex, DIU, MOI, which were agreed upon the signed during, signed during our last two plus two meetings, are beginning to bear fruit. We welcomed the holding of the inaugural meeting of IDEX DIU in July 2020 through video conferencing and are looking forward to the first ISA summit this year. In our meeting, we shared assessment of the security situation across the Indo-Pacific. In the process, in that process, we reaffirm our commitment to peace, stability, and prosperity of all countries in the region. We also agreed that upholding the rules-based international order, respecting the rule of law and freedom of navigation in the international seas, and upholding the territorial integrity and the sovereignty of all states are essential. Our defense cooperation is intended to further these objectives. Both sides welcomed Australia joining the forthcoming Malabar exercise. We appreciate the visit of Secretary Pompeo and Secretary Jasper to India. We had a very constructive dialogue and will continue to work together to strengthen our engagement in defense, security, and other areas. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. May I now call upon the Honorable Mark Esper, Secretary of Defense, for his remarks. Minister Singh, Minister Jai Shankar, Secretary Pompeo, it is great to be here in New Delhi and for the four of us to meet and to discuss the important issues of the day and indeed the important issues of the future. As the world confronts a global pandemic and growing security challenges, the United States-India partnership is more important than ever to ensure security, stability, and prosperity of the region and the world. Fifteen years after the conclusion of the first U.S.-India defense framework, the defense ties between our two nations remain a key pillar of our overall bilateral relationship. Based on our shared values and common interests, we stand shoulder to shoulder in support of a free and open Indo-Pacific for all, particularly in light of increasing aggression and destabilizing activities by China. I am pleased to report that today we made substantial progress in further strengthening our relationship, building upon last year's successful 2 plus 2 ministerial in Washington and the many discussions Defense Minister Singh and I have had these past several months. During our meetings these last two days, we affirmed, reaffirmed the United States' commitment to a comprehensive and forward-looking defense partnership with India and discussed opportunities to expand our regional security cooperation military-to-military -military interactions, and defense trade relationship. This includes increasing bilateral defense cooperation in the Indian Ocean region, Southeast Asia, and the broader Indo-Pacific. Recently, this cooperation was demonstrated by the combined exercise between the Indian Navy and the USS Nimitz Carrier Strike Group in July. In addition, we have exchanged military liaisons with India to strengthen coordination between our military staffs, 
and we are working to establish new cyber and space dialogues to increase cooperation in domains where both our countries face emerging threats. We also discussed engagement with like-minded partners such as Japan and Australia to advance maritime security, humanitarian aid, disaster relief, and other common interests across the region. India's recent decision to include Australia in the upcoming Malabar naval exercise alongside American, Indian, and Japanese forces reflects an acknowledgement of the importance of working multilaterally together to address global challenges. Defense information sharing, both at the service and joint service level, is another area in which we are making significant progress. It is important to note that we achieved a significant milestone today with the signing of the Basic Exchange and Cooperation Agreement, the last of the foundational defense agreements between our countries, which enables greater geospatial information sharing between our armed forces. We also reached agreement to expand secure communi communications capabilities between our militaries and among defense leadership. Finally, our defense trade and technology cooperation continues to grow as reflected in India's acquisition of Apache and Seahawk helicopters earlier this year. We look forward to advancing sales for other key defense platforms, including fighter aircraft and unmanned aerial systems. Despite today's challenging security environment, the partnership between the United States and India, the world's two largest democracies, remains resilient, strong, and growing. I want to thank my Indian counterparts for their hospi hospitality and leadership as we continue to work to deepen our cooperation, advance our shared interests and values, and defend international rules and norms. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I call upon the Honorable Michael Pompeo, Secretary of State, to make his remarks. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Minister Jayshankar, Mr. Singh, thank you for hosting Secretary Esper and I. Uh, Minister Jayshankar, it's great to see you again after having been with you so recently in Tokyo with our quad partners earlier this month. Uh, big things are happening as our democracies align to better protect the citizens of our two countries and indeed of the free world. And it's an honor to visit this great nation. It's my third trip here as America's Secretary of State. When I was here, uh, last year, I urged two countries to embark on a new age of ambition in our relationship, and I think we've absolutely done that, and that the conversations that we held today reflected welcome progress towards that goal. Thanks to Prime Minister Modi and President Trump's leadership and our shared values, our ties are growing stronger day by day. This morning, we visited the National War Memorial to honor the brave men and women of the Indian Armed Forces who have sacrificed for the world's largest democracy, including 20 that were killed by the PLA forces in the Gawan Valley in June. The United States will stand with the people of India as they confront threats to their sovereignty and to their liberty. Uh, as to our discussion these two days, look, our joint efforts to fight the pandemic, which we talked about at great length, are a strong signal that our nations are committed to working together and expanding our partnership across many fronts. U.S. health agencies are working closely with, with government partners of India on the COVID-19 response. Indian companies, too, are cooperating with Gilead to manufacture remdesivir for use by low- and middle-income countries all around the world. And several Indian and U.S. companies are working together to test and manufacture potential vaccine candidates. Further, I'm proud to announce today new agreements between the United States Department of Health and Human Services and the Indian Ministry on Health and Family Welfare to enhance health cooperation. It could not come at a better time. The challenge of defeating the pandemic that came from Wuhan also fed into our robust discussions about the Chinese Communist Party. Our leaders and our citizens see with increasing clarity that the CCP is no friend to democracy, the rule of law, transparency, nor to freedom of navigation, the foundation of a free and open and prosperous Indo-Pacific. I'm glad to say that the United States and India are taking steps to strengthen our cooperation against all manner of threats, and not just those posed by the Chinese Communist Party. In the past year, we've expanded our cooperation on cyber issues. Our navies have held joint exercises in the Indian Ocean. I note, too, happily, that Australia is joining Malabar in 2020 naval exercise. 
I'm also confident that our two nations will work together in new and better ways to meet the region's infrastructure needs. Already, the United States has joined the Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure, launched by Prime Minister Modi, and we strongly support the Blue Dot Network. The United States Development Finance Corporation has established a liaison here, posting right in India. It's great progress that will set the stage for more good economic work together. Lastly, uh, we, the United States, values India as a multilateral partner, whether it's through the Quad, through new cooperation on Mekong regional issues, making Afghan peace negotiations successful, or working together during India's upcoming term on the United Nations Security Council. We continue to support India's permanent membership of that body. May the United States keep leading together along with India on the issues of our time, and may God bless America and India. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And may I now invite Honorable Minister of External Affairs, Dr. S. Jay Shankar, for his remarks to the media. Raksha Mantriji, Secretary Pompeo, Secretary Esper, friends of the media. As you have heard from my colleagues, we have just concluded the third India-US 2 plus 2 dialogue. This format is reflective of our comprehensive global strategic partnership. Before our meeting today, I met Secretary Pompeo yesterday to discuss a range of foreign policy issues. These have been two very productive days, and I thank our counterparts for making that happen, for taking the effort to come here physically. If I may say so myself, the performance of our relationship in the last few years has been exceptionally positive. Political consultations and cooperation have grown. Defense exchanges and trade, too. Economic interactions and commerce are up. The partnership in science, technology, and innovation is stronger. And our energy security clearly enhanced. Not least, the unique people-to-people -people contacts that defines this relationship remains vibrant, whether in the flow of talent in education or in tourism. We discussed our experiences in responding to the COVID-19 challenge at some length. The facilitation of travel, even during the pandemic, was very commendable. Today, our collaboration concentrates more on the domains of vaccine and testing that are so central to the return of normalcy. We are also committed to creating more trusted and resilient global supply chains. And India, that is now focused on recovery, resilience, and reform, welcomes an expanded partnership with the United States. The 2 plus 2 dialogue has a Paul Mill agenda that underlines our close bilateral relationship. Our national security convergences have obviously grown in a more multipolar world. We meet today to not only advance our own interests, but to ensure that our bilateral cooperation makes a positive contribution in the world arena. We are also committed to addressing together global issues ranging from HADR situations to maritime security and counterterrorism. As you have heard from my colleagues, the Indo-Pacific region was a particular focus of our talks. We reiterated the importance of peace, stability, and prosperity for all countries in this region. As Raksha Mantri stated, this is possible only by upholding the rules-based international order, ensuring the freedom of navigation in international seas, promoting open connectivity, and respecting the territorial integrity and sovereignty of all states. A multipolar world must have a multipolar Asia as its basis. Discussions also covered developments in our neighboring countries. We made clear that cross-border terrorism is completely unacceptable. On Afghanistan, India's stakes in its security and stability are evident, as is our willingness to contribute to international efforts to that end. India enters the UN Security Council on the 1st of January 2021 as a non-permanent member. We look forward 
to working with the United States there as in other multilateral platforms. In conclusion, I thank Secretaries Pompeo and Esper once again for a very useful and very fruitful 2 plus 2 dialogue. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Now moving on to questions for the dignitaries. Given the time constraints, we will take two questions from the Indian media pool, following which Principal Deputy Spokesperson from the Department of State, Mr. Cale Brown, will invite two questions from the U.S. media pool. From the Indian media, the first question is from Siddhant Sibbal from Vion, followed by Manas from PTI. Siddhant, you may like to go ahead. Uh, my question is to EM. Uh, so we have seen a spate of engagement between United States and India, the Quad meeting, the visit by the Deputy Secretary to New Delhi, and then, of course, this high-level 2 plus 2 meeting. The entire engagement coming just before the U.S. election, any specific reason or timing? And is the China factor reason behind these engagements? Uh, well, I think uh, for, as for the timing, uh, the previous two uh, rounds of the 2 plus 2 dialogue were also held around the same time uh, in October, November. As for what is the factor uh, for holding it, there, aren't, there isn't one factor, there are two factors. One is called India, the other is called the United States of America. Uh, if you look at the growth of this relationship, as I pointed out in virtually every domain, uh, it's been, it's actually been very, very remarkable uh, over the last 20 years, but I would say especially the last few years. Uh, this is a relationship that serves our national interest well, as it does that of the United States. But what is equally important is that the Indo-US collaboration can be a force of good. So in that sense, uh, it is truly global, it is truly comprehensive, it is truly strategic, and that's the reason why we are meeting. Thank you, sir. Manas from PTI. Uh, good afternoon, Raksha Mantriji. Uh, so the talks have uh, taken place at a very, very crucial time when India is facing security challenges along its northern and western borders. And India has been uh, focusing on enhancing its internal defense capabilities by building military platforms within the country. So how far these talks today have helped India in consolidating ties with the US in terms of co-development of joint military uh, platforms as well as weapon systems? We have signed four very, very significant uh, agreements, including BECA today. So how it will enhance the overall defense cooperation between India and the US? Thank you so much. You are right. We aspire to go beyond the buyer-seller approach to genuine partnership with the U.S. in the defense and related industry. This is precisely why we have liberalized our defense sector for direct foreign investment and undertaking enabling measures to enhance ease of doing business. And we conveyed the secretaries that creation of a robust ecosystem of defense industry in India through partnership and investment is the fundamental goal of the Atma Nirbhar Bharat vision of Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi. In a broader context, India offers opportunities for shifting production and the global supply chains in the wake of dis dis disruptions due to the pandemic. We invited original equipment manufacturers, other companies from USA to invest in India taking advantage of 74% FDI ceiling in the defense industry under automatic route or even larger equity share through government approval. India has very substantial requirements which can sustain such investments over years. We explained how the reforms in our acquisition policy further enhanced incentives for investment in Indian defense industry. We pointed out that to Asia and elsewhere, goods and service exports from India could be a rewarding option. We spoke of the advantage of developing maintenance, repairs, and overhaul facilities in India for the entire region 
for US origin equipment. The visit of secretaries has been wonderful opportunity to elaborate on the initiative of self-reliant India. We hope both the secretaries appreciate our policies and they will carry our carry our messages back to their government and the industry of USA. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now may I request Mr. Kale Brown to invite questions from the U.S. media. Over to you, Kale. And I'll turn to our U.S. colleagues for uh, one question per, and I'll ask you to identify to whom you're directing your question. Let's start with Paul Hanley from AFP. Hi. For Minister Singh, could you tell us where this relationship is going in, in the defense relationship? Are you planning to buy more weapons from the U.S., like F-18 jets for your Navy? And would you be distancing yourself from Russian suppliers, including for the S-400? And there's a question thank, for no, thank you. Dr. S. Thank you. Can you tell us, are thank we you. on a collision course with Sir. China? Are we on a crash course Sir. with China, with Taiwan and India building Sir, a relationship? Sir, one question, please. तक वेपन का सवाल है इस संबंध में कहना चाहता हूं कि जिसके साथ भी हथियार सेल करने होते हैं तो बाय करने होते हैं उनके साथ नेगोशिएशंस होते हैं और नेगोशिएशंस के आधार पर ये डिसीजन होते हैं किसके साथ लेंगे किसके साथ नहीं लेंगे ये निर्भर करता है वो हमारे नेगोशिएशन के ऊपर Great for our next question can we go to Will Malden with Wall Street Journal Thanks so much for having this, and uh, Secretary Pompeo, if I, could, if I could ask you, other than the um, defense, the major defense pact that was signed on the geospatial cooperation, what other measures uh, did you speak about with your Indian counterparts that would help uh, with ensuring a free and open Indo-Pacific and potentially uh, confronting a more aggressive China? Since it is a uh, Pandemic. I also wanted to ask uh, about the coronavirus. Well, one Before question, Minister Jai Shankar. One question, please. You approve of the U.S. Uh, withdrawal from Mr. the Maldon, WHO and other One question. Since it's a pandemic uh, emergency and we have two uh, democracies here, asking You're questions question, from our representatives. Sir. Thank you. So, Will, on um, in, in addition to the number of agreements, I think you suggested there were two. There were a number of agreements that were signed. Uh, the, the work that we have done together uh, over the course of these two days builds on a lot of work that State Department and the Department of Defense have been doing over the past weeks and months to prepare for this very time. And so you can see uh, whether it's work that we're doing on a bilateral basis uh, to put our economic relationships in a better place, if it's work that you can see us doing uh, to ensure that we have a, a depth of understanding about who has capabilities in certain parts of the world where we can diplomatically be make one plus one more than that working alongside each other and I'm, I'm leaving here I'm traveling to Sri Lanka I'm traveling to the Maldives on to Indonesia uh, understanding that the interest that India has in those places I can go and travel uh, and uh, help us collectively build out based on our partnership and our friendship and the, the warm commitment between our two leaders uh, we can do good things for the entire region and do them uh, together uh, and cover down on places each of us could not do individually. So there were many good things that flowed from the course of the conversations over these two days, and I'm confident that you'll see in the days ahead many more good things uh, that occur, will, will occur because of the conversations we've been able to have face-to-face -face here over these last days. Thank you, sir. This concludes this media event, and I thank you all for joining.